a good boy and lives in a truck. I think he's talking about me. Teasel Weasel. Look at that tail go. Woo! <laughs> the day is almost over already and it just begun. Does that make sense? It's 1.30 here Eastern Time. I just unloaded like 500 boxes, heavy boxes here at this place. I'm feeling like a muscle man right now. I'm gonna be so sore. <laughs> oh, I love these uh, these deliveries though because they keep me in shape, right? So yeah, 500 bucks took me from, well, I had some help in there. Took us from 9.30 a.m. till now. Going nonstop. They stopped for breaks, I just kept going. No breaks for Trucker Josh, just giving her. You know, I wanted to get out of here. I gotta be in Scarborough as soon as possible. So enough talking, let's get over to Scarborough because I got another 11 boxes to bring there. And then we're headed to Ottawa. It is a gloomy, rainy day in the GTA. This is the greater Toronto area. And that guy's on a motorcycle. What are you doing, buddy? Really? Really? That's a ramp on right to Highway 401 East, then keep left. Wow. So the greater Toronto area, we call it the GTA, is the most multicultural place on the planet. Take a second right now to think of any race or culture or religion that you like, that you like or that you can think of. The first one that pops into your mind. There's a whole pile of them here. Everybody equally represented and getting along, living in peace. Don't tell me the world can't get along. All you gotta do is look at Canada and I'll show you. Every culture, every religion, every belief, every mindset can get along and be tolerant of one another and live side by side. I mean, you take some mortal enemies out in the world, you take them into Canada here and you put them side by side in a suburban neighborhood. They get along, they go to work, they do their part, they pay their taxes. It's a nation of peace. You know our shooting that we had in Ottawa a few weeks ago, it was such a big deal in Canada because we do not see that kind of violence here. It doesn't happen here. What are you so concerned about, man? What are you so concerned about? You just were outside. You wanna go outside again? So we just finished our drop here in Scarborough. We're done for the day, done physical work for the day. Now we actually gotta do driving for the rest of the day. We gotta go to Ottawa. I'm not too sure how far away that is from here yet, but uh, I'll find out and I'll touch base in just a second. Come on, Mandy. Do your thing. Do your thing, Mandy. Tell me something. Talk to me, woman. Please drive to highlighted route. 435 kilometers. About, uh, I'd say four and a half, five hours. We're gonna find a Timmy's and stop at a Timmy's. Why not, right? Uh, so the time is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's gonna be there around eight o'clock. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, around eight o'clock tonight we'll be there. And then I unload tomorrow morning at seven. And then from there we go to Laval, just outside of Montreal. And yeah, then the trailer will be empty. And then I've already got my next assignment, but I haven't gotten all the details yet. They just asked me if I'd be willing to do it. I need to do some running back and forth in Quebec. Uh, there's somewhere in Quebec where I need to run and pick up freight and bring it back to Montreal to a warehouse. And I need to do that like three or four times apparently, like back and forth, back and forth. So I don't know how far apart these two destinations are. All I know is that there's like three or four loads that they need moved from one spot to another spot. So back and forth. And they called me up and asked me, you know, they're real nice about it. Could you please do this? <laughs> yeah, why not? That's what I'm here for. I'm a driver. I drive where you tell me to drive. You tell me to drive there. You need a driver there. Here I am. That's, that's what I do. That's what I get paid for. Like, they don't get paid for me to tell them where I'm going to go. They pay me so that they can tell me where to go, right? I've heard so many stories of places where, where drivers get upset and 
They tell their dispatch, I only go here, I only go there, I don't go there, I don't go there. Who's paying who? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's the employee and who's the employer? <laughs> I'm just like, wait a second, wait a second. We're the drivers, okay? We're the employees. Well, technically I'm not an employee, I'm an employee of my own business. I own my own business. This is my truck, my business. Uh, but why would I turn down work? I don't care where they send me. Sometimes I'd rather not go to these places. Sometimes there's lots of snow there and I, that's the only reason I don't want to go to places if, it's, if there's a lot of snow there. Any other reason, any other day, I don't really care. But if there's snow, I'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm not gonna say no. Unless if I really need to be home for something, but. You know, I'm lucky to have a, a great team working with me that cares about me as a person. They know me personally. It's like a family. They're my family back home. My extended family, my work family. Wonderful, wonderful on routes. These are like the most amazing thing Ontario has ever done. Ever. Like since the beginning of Ontario. Since the very beginning. Oh man, so good. And they have nice truck parking here. They make it into a nice little on route. Really, it's your on route to where you're going. Got everything in there. Restaurants, coffee, Burger King, Tim Hortons. I think it was a great idea. Good job, Ontario. Good job. They got a lot of these too. I mean, I really wish Manitoba would come up with something. Something like this, like anything. We have our one rest area, which isn't very modern. I think the toilet's flush. I think. But that's in Minnedosa, and that's on the lesser traveled road. The main highway, Trans Canada number one, there is a rest area. Which again, uh, it's pretty modern. I think it has flushing toilets. But there's only one right on the Saskatchewan, <coughs> right on the Saskatchewan border, on the Trans Canada one, and then there's one in Minnedosa. Oh yeah, there's one actually on the east side of Winnipeg too. So there is rest areas in Manitoba. They're just, they're just not an on route. I think they should make on routes in Manitoba. I'll have to come up with our own catchy little name for it though. What, do you, what would you guys call it if we had on routes in Manitoba? We can't call it on route, that's like Ontario. On route, you're like on route to where you're going or on, O-N meaning Ontario, Ontario route. What would it be? It, it wouldn't work with the Manitoba acronym like MB route. Mubu route. Welcome to the Mubu route. What? Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Yeah, we're getting fuel here again at Napanee Flying J. You want to see it? There it is. Napanee Flying J. Just like any other Flying J you'd see in the States anywhere. It's, it's very nice, very nice and clean. I don't want to talk about something that's really been bothering me. Really been bothering me. I notice it way more in the east, in Ontario and Quebec and the Maritimes than anywhere else. When I pass someone, when I pass another truck on the highway, you know what bothers me? The second I look into my mirror to see if it's safe to turn back into the lane, pow! 
They nail you with their high beams. That is my biggest pet peeve. We have to stop that, guys. It doesn't help. I understand what you're doing. You have, it's a good thought. You're trying to say, hey, it's safe to come back into the lane. Blinding me with your high beams is not the way to do that. It's very rude, and it leaves purple spots in my eyes. It's not safe. Did you know it's actually illegal to use your high beams within 4,000 feet of another moving vehicle on a highway? That's a law I heard. That's what I heard. Even if that wasn't a law, even if I heard wrong, it's still not right. I hate passing a truck because I know as soon as I look into my mirror, boom, I'm gonna get blinded and that hurts my eyes. No need to be flashing people your high beams. There's a switch on your dashboard. You click it and your lights turn off. Most trucks come equipped with a special button just for this very feature. You press the button and your lights dim and then come back to, you know, you dim them. You don't flash your brights. We have to stop doing that, guys. I know that a lot of Canadian trucks, we have daytime running lights, right? As soon as you put the truck in gear, you push in the brakes, the lights come on, right? So sometimes you don't have a switch that'll turn your lights completely off and then on. Just don't do anything. <laughs> I purposely do not acknowledge anyone who flashes their high beams at me to let me know to turn back into the lane. Because that, to me, is not helping. I will turn back in when I feel it's safe, and if you flash your high beams at me, you're not getting a little flash ruse to say thank you. I always acknowledge people who dim their lights. Because it is a helping hand, right? It's, they're, just, they're just trying to help. And I know that the, the thought is there and the thought is good. But it doesn't help. Stop flashing your high beams in people's mirrors to tell them to come back in. Stop it. I know some people just go like a little tick, 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 just, just a little flicker, right? A flicker. Okay, I can deal with a flicker. You just flick your lights, because sometimes people can't turn their lights on and off, right? I would still prefer you just don't do anything. But it's just getting on my nerves. Like, it's to the point where when I pass someone, I'm nervous about looking into my passenger mirror because I know as soon as I do, I'm gonna get blinded with their high beams. When did this become okay? When did this become a thing to do? somewhat of a large audience, and I want all of you to know, when a truck passes you at night, do not use your high beams, because some of these drivers, they'll get upset at you if you don't turn in, right? Because I say, I always do that, if they flash me their brights, I'm not turning back, I'll turn back in when I feel it's safe. And if you don't turn back in right away, they'll keep flashing their brights at you, and then sometimes they'll hold them on, right? They'll hold their high beams on until you start to move over. What are you doing? Blinding me the flicker. Okay, that's okay. You just give me a flicker and if I don't turn back in right away I saw him believe me. I saw him. There's no way I didn't see your high beams But some drivers especially out here in Eastern Canada, they'll keep flashing their brights keep flashing their brights until you finally move in The most frustrating thing about driving out here is being blinded when I'm trying to turn back into the lane doesn't help Doesn't help stop doing it. Are you ready to go outside man? Are you ready to go outside? You like our Christmas decorations? No? Fine, whatever. You don't have to like them. I like them. <laughs> so I'm gonna close out the day just talking about this uh, flashing your lights topic. One more time, I made a Facebook post today calling on all the drivers who follow me to start the new trend of dimming your lights the way it's supposed to be if you want to help another driver back into the lane. Honestly, when I pass you, I don't need your help to get back into the lane. I know you're just trying to be courteous. L listen, I really do appreciate that, and I'm not taking away from the fact that you're giving that good gesture, being courteous to me. I understand. However, I don't find it courteous uh, to be blinded. Like, think of it from my point of view. I'm not expecting it, because I, I don't do it myself, right? So I'm not expecting it. I'm just expecting... You know, I'm gonna move over into the lane. A lot of times the drivers wait until you turn your turn signal on and then they flash you. At that point, I've already decided that it's safe to come over and I'm coming over. Uh, you flashing me or whatever you're gonna do is irrelevant, I'm coming over. I've made that decision. <laughs> if you flash me, I'm assuming you're telling me that, no, don't come over yet. You know what I mean, but anyways. Most trucks 
today. All new trucks. I know this for a fact because I've researched it. Every single new truck released comes with a specific dimmer switch for your headlights because manufacturers know that we like to help each other out on the road. We like to be courteous to one another and I like to be courteous to you guys too when you guys pass me. So they realized, you know, using your high beams in traffic is illegal. You know, there's a lot of places handing out tickets for that. Why? Because it's dangerous. I know people in the old days say, oh, we used to do it all the time. What's wrong with you? You got sensitive eyes? No, it's not that my eyes are sensitive. It's that new trucks that are developed these days in this modern day or current day, whatever, you know what I mean. New trucks coming out have much brighter lights than they had back then. Much better technology in the headlights. The dims, yeah, they're they're pretty much projector lights pointed straight down. And the high beams are extremely bright. It's like a train, right? That's just the way lights are nowadays. So when you put those on in my mirror, imagine this, I'm sitting here in my seat, right? I'm just moseying along, beep, 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 doo, down the road, right? And I'm like, all right, well, it's time to move over. Look over to my mirror, look forward, look over to my mirror, safe to move over, turn my signal on or whatever, look back to my mirror, kapow! High beams in my face. A lot of these high beams are so bright that they put purple spots in my eyes because I was looking directly at them, right? Because I'm looking at your headlights because that's what I'm judging how far away you are. So kapow, right in my face, whoa! Okay, I get the gesture. I understand you're trying to tell me, hey bud, it's safe to come on back in. Come on back in, bud, it's okay. However, when you do that, you're not making it much safe, safer for me because now I can't see the lane that I'm moving into. I can't see the road that's in front of me. You see what I mean? <laughs> it's not helping. So like I've been saying, manufacturers nowadays on the new trucks have put dimmer switches. I encourage you to go find that dimmer switch on your truck. Volvos, I know I've driven them, have them here on the steering wheel, a little dimmer switch. And even in Canada, your headlights will turn off because the Volvo's signal lights are also the marker lights. So you can turn your headlights off on the Volvos. That's why it bugs me the most when a Volvo flashes me in with their high beams because I know it doesn't matter where you are, you can turn your headlights off. That bothers me. Uh, Peterbilt's have them on the signal lever. You push the signal lever down, right? You pull it up, that's your high beams. You push it down, that is your dimmer. I've heard that internationals also have them on the steering wheel. Uh, if your truck, for whatever reason, doesn't come with these nice little buttons, which I think they all do, if they don't, there's always, you know, the old fashioned, that is not my headlights. <laughs> The old fashioned, you know, turning the headlights off and then back on. This has just been a real big pet peeve of mine and I've wanted to share it with you for quite a while. I've noticed this to be especially bad in Quebec and Ontario, New Brunswick, Eastern Canada. I've noticed that almost every single truck I pass, right as I'm about to move back in, they blind me. And uh, I don't know what to say about it really because I, I really want to say thank you because you're you're giving me that gesture, but at the same time, I'm not gonna say thank you for blinding me. So I, I don't signal back for drivers who flash their high beams at me. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't flash back at them. I don't say thank you because I will not say thank you for blinding me. I won't do that. However, drivers that do help me out and dim their lights, exact same gesture, exact same gesture. You're saying, hey buddy, come on back in, come on back in. Friendly gesture, right? Except you're doing it in a much less aggressive way and everybody's happy. I'm happy saying, oh good, I'm clear to go back in. I say thank you, flash you my four ways back, flash my marker lights, whatever I do to say thank you. We both all go on down the road our merry little way, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But for you drivers who have trucks who cannot dim, I don't know of any trucks that can't because even Canadian trucks, you can turn it from your headlights to your daytime running lights, but I would just say, you know what? It's okay to not flash. It's okay to just let them find their own way back into the lane. You know, I'm a big boy. I can drive this truck and I'm confident changing lanes. I mean, that's a basic maneuver. I mean, if someone can't change lanes without a little bit of help, maybe you shouldn't 
you know, maybe you need to work on stuff. <laughs> Every single driver out there, if you have your CDL, you are capable of changing lanes on your own. Anyways, <laughs> diesel, can we please stop talking about this now? Please. Yeah, man, anytime you, anytime you like, man, just stop talking about it. This is awkward. There's some people who are mad at you right now. There's some people who agree with you. Some people yelling, hey, man! Yeah, I know, I know. Again, I don't mean to uh, take away from the gesture. Thank you for the gesture. Let's find better ways of giving that same gesture. Let's be a little bit more courteous yet. More courteous by dimming instead of aggressively flashing high beams. I've noticed that out here. If you don't change back into your lane, people get upset. Hey, change back into your lane. They'll keep flashing their high beams. Not necessary. I saw it the first time. I'll turn back in when I'm well ready. So with that note, have a great night, guys. I hope you guys are back tomorrow, 4 a.m. Central Time, because that's when I'll be up back on the YouTubes. And tomorrow we're driving from Ottawa to Montreal, and then we'll be empty, and then we're figuring out what we're doing from there. I think we're going up to northern Quebec. I don't know. That should be interesting. Anyways, guys, pass the word along to your friends. Dim, don't flash, or don't flash, dim, whatever, whichever way you want to put it. Same courtesy, but even more courteous. You know what I mean? Even better. Even better. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.